Hey guys, welcome back and today I'll be playing chapter 4 of my vow to my liege. So let's get started. Iris, it's too dangerous for you to attend the ritual to kill the dragon god. I hope you would be spared, but I know this is it is of the utmost importance that every member of the royal family attend. The head priest has already informed me of the dangers. Since you're not afraid, I need to be just brave as you. I knew you would say that. Here, this is for you. Isn't this the jadefish amulet that, has, that, that never leaves your side? Yes. This jade amulet house houses a magical spirit which I have nourished with my own magical powers for a long time now. Now its power is on a par with mine. Ooh. <laughs> Isn't that supposed to be given to your future yin fish as a token of love? <laughs> he loves me. I mean, I am a good looker. <laughs> Why are you giving it to me? Do you love me? <laughs> If something should happen, this amulet could save your life. Then that's all the more reason why I should not take it. What will happen if your powers aren't enough when you are alone on Tiger Hill? They will have to seal the Dragon God's spirit in the Sacred Dean before transporting it to the Tiger Hill to have the seal reinforced by the sword formation. You'll be more in danger than me, so you should take it. Oh, he cares about me. Iris, you think of it as it's giving me a peace of mind and take it. You can return it to me once the ceremony is over. Agreed? Since you feel that way, fine. My only wish in this life is for Iris to be safe. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Sunlight. After a few days of continuous rain and gloomy skies, the warm and gentle sunlight is especially comforting. If only if it wasn't so bright, <laughs> me. Wait, where am I? I tumble out of bed and look around. It seems that I'm alone in a simple, tidy wooden hunt. The smell of medical herbs hangs in the air, but all my wounds have already been treated and even my usual alignments are not giving as much pain as they normally do. I take in my surroundings with suspicion. I cannot find my sword. Left with no choice, I pick up a stick that is lying next to the door and give a few practice swings. Good. This should be helpful. Wait a minute. Where's Anju and the Xiao Hang? Hey, lad. Are you alright? Doing a British accent. Wow. A painfully dressed. Drace. A plainly dressed village woman appears. She puts down her broom and comes to greet me warmly. You must be hungry. I will make you some fish soup while we rest in the hut. Wait a minute, Mrs. I suddenly feel something holding me back. Looking down, I see that I am surrounded by village children. They eye me with curiosity. Shoo! You're scaring our guest. If you don't stop it, the gentleman will not give you any sweets next time. The village children disperse like a school of small fish and laugh as they run away. I put down my stick awkwardly. Yeah, I'm not going to swing at kids, so I'll, of course I have to put the stick down. Mrs. Can you please tell me where I am? This is Zalu Village. Zalu Village. Is there a doctor by the name of Zishi here? <laughs> Lad, this is Mr. Zishi's home. I'm like, what? What? It's a little trashed down. I mean, run down, but it's okay looking, I guess. I'm kidding. I look around the area to see a simple and clean courtyard surrounded by a few wooden huts. As long as the place is clean and you are happy and satisfied, it's all right. In the middle of the courtyard lay a few bamboo seeds. On them are strange plants and insects that were left out to dry. This really does look like a residence of a doctor. No, witchcraft. 
The village woman continues to explain. When the gentleman rescued you and brought you out of the swamp, you were all covered in wounds. You had slept for a few days after that. You were all very fortunate to have survived the monsters in that swamp. That's true. Do you know where the two people were who were with me, Mrs? Have you seen them? Of course. The village woman takes out a piece of cloth from her pocket and hands it to me. This was that the young man asked me to pass to you. He left the village yesterday morning. Anxiously, I unfold the cloth. On it is a message from Gyohyeon. Iris, I am going to the border town to look for the others. Please trust me and wait for me here. Hajun. As for the little girl, I cannot explain it. You better follow me. She better be alive! The village woman brings me out to the hut and takes out a bunch of keys. Did he lock her up? Although there is nothing to steal from this poor remote village, we were afraid that the village idiot might do something stupid. We had only meant to protect her by locking her up. Sure. <laughs> she unlocks the door while apologizing to me. Where's her strings? Are those like the strings like when someone like touches it, it kind of like notifies the person who's watching that there's movement going on? Probably it's those. It's, it is dark in the hut, and after my head, eyes adjust to the darkness, I greet it with a shocking sight. Shahan seems to be floating in mid-air. Oh my gosh, an exorcism. <laughs> her arms, which have been curled tightly in front of her, are now lying by her sides. This ominous dagger that she had been holding is also suspended in mid-air, and now is dangling tip down directly over her heart. It, if it falls but a few inches, it will pierce her heart. There is a bird engraved on the dagger with gem for eyes, and they gleam sin sinisterly. It feels like if it was trying to read my mind. The village woman suddenly pulls me back and is at, as I am about to take a step in. She has a lot of strength for someone so petite. Me. Her one yang forces me to take a step back, step away backwards. <laughs> Be careful. Don't go in or you will bump into the strings. Strings? Is it then that I notice something shiny as it reflects the light coming in through the door? It is one of the many strands of silver string that are tightly strung all over the hut. It is also these silver strings that are holding up a girl and the dagger, making them look like they're floating in mid-air upon fr first glance. The gentleman has instructed that no one should touch these strings before the girl wakes up. So wait, is the string holding up the girl? Did I read that right? And if it is, why? What? I'm confused. Saying this, the village woman locks the door and hands the keys over to me with a smile. He also said that once you have woken and have seen this, I should hand the keys over to you. Feel free to look in on her, but please don't go in. Th thank you, Mrs. And where is Mr. Zishi? He went to the river to wash his hair. Oh, sorry. British accent. If you take the footpath down, you will see him on the left. Thank you. After thanking the village woman, I turned around and ran out of the courtyard. Come back quickly. Don't forget to finish the fish soup. It is because I feel well rested or because the medicine he gave me was so effective that my body feels as light as a feather. It has been many years since I felt this way. Even my heart feels like it was soaring or it was beating fast because you saw the love of your life. <laughs> now that is the tea. The footpath goes downhill, and I can already smell the faint scent of water. Good thing it's not blood, because if it did... <sighs> she always sends blood. Oh. Wow. Hello. <laughs> Suddenly, a thought crosses my mind. I slow down my pace. My life starts to flash before my eyes, as if I were on the brink of death. Everything that happened in my past feels so unreal. Although I cannot deny that we are indeed saved by a man named Izishi. Vis visions of a man dressed in white while standing amid that black swampy water came to my mind. I covered my mouth in amazement. Girl, I wasn't amazed. I was awestruck. I was whiplashed. I saw the man in my dreams right in front of me, girl. You better be you better be feeling more than amazed. It's not possible. 
This must be the illusion that one of that one has before they die. Ever since the nightmares about what happened to Lake Tai began, the image of that person keeps appearing in my mind. That must be why I'm seeing a vision of him as my rescuer. That must be it. After all, when I went to the sh sword pond five years ago, I saw the place filled with dead bodies. Among them was... Was it? As I tried to piece the past events together in my mind, I became more and more confused as to what really happened. Amid the chaos in my mind, one assumption seems clear. If only that person were alive. I run like the wind to the riverside. I'm running. I'm running to see the love of my life. Next to the old tree that is half submerged in water, I see a familiar figure with his back turned towards me, his head lowered. He's staring at two mounds of dirt that are under a tree. I hold my breath and slow down my pace as my vision begins to blur. In front of me is a man with hair fluttering lightly in the breeze. He carries with him an air of gentle dignity, just like my childhood dreams which have disappeared and have never returned. I need to find a beautiful voice for him. What should I do? Iris. <laughs> that was so terrible. Iris. I don't see him having a deep voice. It's more gentle and soft. The man turns around and faces me with a warm smile. A refreshing breeze blows from the direction of the river and all the hardships that I faced these past five years seem to disappear in it. This is how I want to meet my soulmate. I'm already crying because I want to be no more ready. <laughs> the only thing I can remember is our final moments together and Yi Huing's beautiful and gentle smile. Today I finally see for myself in the pair of calm, bright eyes a thin, fair village man. Although I have changed since then, he is still as perfect as the day we first met. Wow, she's in love with him. If this is a dream, please don't wake me up. Iris? Okay, how, we need to talk. Hello. Yeah, his voice is very soft and gentle. I don't see you for a few years, and you turned down. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> this man has jokes. <laughs> you hang up his arms as he teases me. I like him already. Welcoming me, welcoming me like he did in our youth and making me feel like I have never left his side. I choke on my emotions as I punch his chest with all my might. I just, ha I can't, I can't do my voice over, over his voice. His voice is just too beautiful. Oh, Iris, did you need to use so much strength? I thought, I thought you had died. Unable to control myself, I burst into tears. I'm bursting into tears with, because of his beauty. <laughs> Lost in my anger, the turbulence of many mixed emotions turns into a violent storm within my heart. Suddenly, I am taken back five years ago to the bloody event that happened at Lake Tai, seeing the ground at the sword pond covered with flesh, blood, and corpses. I had torn my vocal cords with an ear-piercing scream. I had, n I had once thought that killing the dragon caught would be the will be well worth the sacrifice, but little did I know the price would be so heavy. To secure the spirit of the dragon god, my father had reinforced the sword pond by cruelly sacrificing all the people of the Shi clan. When I had reemerged, oh, when I had rummaged, rummaged through the mountain of corpses like a madman searching for Yi Huang's remains, I felt like I too had died. Why did I survive? Iris. Iris. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. Why do you need to apologize? I couldn't get to tell your hill in time to save you. I'm sorry. Hmm. Why are you blaming yourself when it had nothing to do with you? My head is hurting and I feel dizzy. It almost feels like I'm dying again. Yi Huang let out a sigh and lifts my, my lowered head. He takes his sleeve, gently dries my tear. Under his calm and quiet gaze, I slowly regain my composure. Yi Huang, have you calmed down? Iris, I need you to listen to what I'm about to say. 
at the time before the autumn's offerings to Kamroni and through her div divinations, my mother already knew what was going to happen. What? If your mom loves already if your mom already knew what was gonna happen, wouldn't she want to do something to prevent it? Or maybe it needed to happen for something else to happen. I wonder. I'm wondering if you're catching on on what I'm saying. <laughs> you and I know that the dragon god is not a real god. Once he was absorbing enough souls and magical power from the rulers of Ninj, he will unleash an unstoppable force of evil upon the world. When the time comes, it will be more than just you and I who will suffer. Oh, shit. <laughs> it was my parents and the rest of my clansmen who insisted on killing the dragon god for the greater good. Despite having to sacrifice herself, it was still her choice. Aww. Just as you and your family paid the price for your choice. See, everything happens for a reason. I gazed into Yi Huang's clear bright eyes in an amaze of how he could hold no trace of deception. Iris, I am still alive and so are you. I do not hold any resentment towards anyone. I am speechless, but I know that everything you he has said was from his heart. Shi Ye Huang has always been a generous and broad-minded person. My torrid emotions finally calmed down as I sobbed and rubbed my nose. I see Ye Huang sleep with embarrassment. It is now messy with the snot and tears. Ye Huang waves his hands in the action of casual dismissal. I thought you were going to cry until you died. What a dumb thing to say. I start to laugh and Ye Huang joins in laughter. With everything that happens the day at the sword pond, how will you manage to escape? My mother couldn't bear the thought of me dying if something terrible were to happen. So she secretly arranged for an elderly man in our clan to fake my death and sneak me out of Ninja. Nice going, Mom. We then changed our names and moved here. This is how I became Zi Shi. So I see. Ye Huang had already given me the gist of it, but I do not think the one seeking medical treatment would be you and keen of you. I thought you already knew. A few days ago, an old patient of mine sent me a letter begging me to cure his friend of an unusual alignment. I knew that this was the person of power, but I did not think the friend he mentioned was you until I felt the jade fish amulet nearby. Your old patient should be a relative of Gyu Hyun. So you brushed to the swamp because of my jade fish amulet? Yes. The jade fish amulet is like an extension of myself. When I felt it close by, I was shocked. Five years ago, when you gave me this amulet, did you know what was going to happen? I had a hunch. I thought I said I had a lunch. I had a hunch, but it was, But what does it matter if I can foresee the future like my mother? People are unpredictable, and the future is never set in stone. Ain't that the truth? If I were to predict the future, I would tell people, hey, it's not set in stone. It could change. People's motives and, and I don't know, perception changes over time, so the future is not set in stone. That is true. It never stopped my father nor I from, break, from trying to break the sacred vow, not even when we knew that it would be as difficult as becoming a god. Let bygones be bygones. True. You really don't care about what happened? Yi Huang smiles as he turns to look at the earthen mounds beneath the tree. Oh, I think I skipped a verse. Damn it. Oh. Last year, the old man passed away. I buried him next to my parents' gravestone. And I came here to chat with him whenever I'm free. Aww. Oh, is it those two lumps? You see the two lumps in the background? Is it that? Oh, The dead are no longer with us. So why do the living need to chain ourselves to the emotions of the past? Damn, this is like indirectly speaking to me. It may be you. I gaze at the two mounds of dirt as the river continues to flow endlessly next to me. It seems like I'm the only one holding on to all the hatred and suffering. While I don't want to be tied down by my many, by my, da, 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 down by my destiny, I cannot escape his chains. 
if only there were more easygoing people like you in this world and in my world in our world <laughs> mr seishi come quickly oh come quick mrs mrs Zong. oh he's not british <laughs> the hut with a little girl and dagger are is shaking i'm coming When we were <laughs> someone didn't get her breakfast <laughs> when we reach the courtyard we can hear a strange bestyle sound coming from the wooden hunt and that shall hang is in some of the roof thatching on it has been has even fallen off as i take out the keys yi huang waves his hand and the door opens with a whoosh the once tranquil light in the hut was now turned bizarre. A thick fog escapes the room and engulfs me, making me feel nauseous and dizzy. The once motionless Xiao Hang starts to struggle as the dagger inches closer to stabbing her in the heart. Oh no. Yi Huang reaches for the silver string and immediately blood pours out from his finger, dyeing the silver string red. I command you from the sky. Fall from the earth, rise, obey. As the spell falls from his lips, the silver strings start to glow a pale green. In an instant, the thick fog and the bestial sound stop as everything returns to the peaceful state that it has once been. Ye Huang enters the hut and nods his head to me. She's fine, don't worry. Just now, was that normal? No, it was not normal. I have placed two different kinds of spells on this hut. One is the silver string that is supposed to bring Shen Xiaohang's soul back to her body. Oh my gosh. And the other spells to cast out evil spirits. Usually those two spells wouldn't cause any trouble. Unless Yi Huang holds the dagger gingerly. Gingerly? I've never heard of that word in my life. As he becomes lost in his thoughts. Unless it is the work of the dagger. I too was nearly harmed by its evil aura. Huh? But the dagger is not cursed. But a sacred artifact. Is that a born? Oh, sorry. What did I do? Back to game. Sacred artifact? Yes, we need one of those. That's right. Its magical powers are very potent. It has at least half the power of that of a ding which we sealed in the dragon garden i'm speechless to think of the endless search for such a strong artifact and it was right in front of me this whole time we were always under the impression the dagger was the medium of a curse but if she's not under the curse of the dagger why hasn't she woken up according to what i know of mage x and his group he probably put Xiao Hang's soul in a human sacrificial array to feed on the power that is needed to stain her body that is why she hasn't woken up yet. A human sacrifice array? That's right. The tricky thing about this human sacrifice array is that it would need the blood of his victim to work. If we use force to break it, it would hurt the person's soul. If that sacred dagger hadn't been protecting her, Xiao Hang would have died the minute they captured her soul. So that's why the followers did not kill her? No, even if they had tried, they may have they might have they might not have succeeded the dagger is like an amulet they both contain spirits and will protect their owners but back then the amulet protected me from the evil aura if this danger is so powerful why doesn't it help shall hang perhaps the followers of the dragon god also paid a high price to breach the dragon's dragon dagger's defense from what zhang dan had told me then let me read that sentence. I'm like, my mouth is, the words are jumbling up in my mouth. From one saying, Dan told me, it takes three lives. This is really strange. The followers must have known her real identity if they were after Xiao Hang specifically. But why are they still chasing her after, even, after her even after getting what they wanted? And why are they still using a human sacrifice array? Indeed. Perhaps they needed the magical power from her soul, and hence, they needed to use the array. Perhaps there's something special about Xiao Hang. With that said, was Xiao Hang's disappearance on Tiger Hill really a coincidence? The more we dig into this matter, the more confusing it gets. Mm-hmm. 
It looks like we have to wait until Xiao Hang wakes up to understand this better. So, is there anything we can do to save her from the array? With the help of the silver strings, as long as she can amass enough power within her soul with the help of those silver strings, she should be able to use her own magic to break free from this spell. Her own magic? Did Iris not know that Xiao Hang is a mage? Her powers are quite strong. After learning that the dagger was a sacred artifact, I didn't think there would be a piece of more shocking news. I mean, yeah, I'm basically more human and he's a, um, I guess, a priest in a way. So, of course he's gonna know these things, so you have to inform me. Yi Huang sighs and presses an index finger on Xiao Hang's forehead. A white lit, 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 yeah, let's get lit. <laughs> A white light emits from where he is pressing as the silver strings shimmer all around us. It is then that I realize that Xiao Hang doesn't look as withered as before. She now looks like she has simply fallen asleep. Her rosy cheeks stand out against her dark hair and fair complexion. Although she is still a little childlike, she is quite the beauty. She is beautiful, a powerful mage, and a favorite princess of King of Qi. If I was really a man, I would be happy to have tamed such a treasure. Although I have transferred some of my powers to Xiao Hang, it is only a drop in the ocean compared to what she needs. She needs her own power to break out of this. That said, it must have been an outside force that created the disturbance just now. Could it have been the Dragon God's followers? Should have been? Hmm. Ye Huang must have felt that something was wrong as he wears a stern, stern expression. What's the matter? Something has happened to the protective spells that are placed outside of the village. I don't understand what has happened, but I chased after him as he flies out the door. Oh shoot, who's coming after us? We run back to the bank of the river. There are already quite a few villagers gathered there as they point at the opposite bank. The children run around underfoot as they join in on the fun. This ain't no fun stuff! Following the gaze of the others, I, I look to the opposite bank. Oh shit, it's them. It really is them, <laughs> me too. Yi Huang, we need to get everyone to safety. Don't worry, they can't enter the village since I place a protective spell over it. Saying that, he points to a softly glowing stream that runs along the bank of the river. Is that the protective spell? Yes. A long time ago, the old man and I were afraid that something evil will come into the village. And so together we put this place under a protective spell. After saving you that day, I guess the Dragon God's followers will come back. So I use another protective spell that's especially strong against their form of magic. But they have a lot of people. Are you sure about this? Don't worry. The protective spell has been strengthened and nutrient by the power of nature these many years. But even without the spell, there's still no cause for concern. Geniuses are also proud. <laughs> Me too. Hmm. Nothing. The leader of the followers takes a step forward and points at me. Is he picking up me picking me out for a demonstration? He's holding something in his hands. I'm walk closer to the river bank with caution. He lifts a pale green jade amulet that is made even more eye-catching by the followers' black attire in the background. This is Chen Feng's amulet. Swords, go forth. With an exaggeration of wave of his hand, swords of water magically rise up from the river and fly towards the enemy. The leader of the group gives a sinister sneer as a sudden puff of smoke seems to swallow them where they stand. The spectators gave a gasp of surprise. The water starts turned back into water after passing through the smoke. Once the smoke just dis dissipate, there is no trace of the men in black. Oh, shit. Ye Huang, give me back my sword. Chen Feng and I were on that boat when we were attacked and got separated. He must have been captured by those villains. Yeah. 
but it may also be a trap. If their goal is to catch you, then wouldn't it be more effective to use the actual captors instead? I know, but you cannot expect me to do nothing, can you? Chen Feng is also my friend. Do you think I'd do nothing if he really was in danger? I would have been able to tell if he had been captured by the Dragon God's followers with just one look. I didn't mean it that way. I understand, but your body is still weak and you need time to recover. You should wait for me here. Ye Huang looks at me sternly. I felt I feel guilty, like a difficult patient who has not followed her doctor's orders. <laughs> Fine. You have a point. I will stay here in the village. Don't worry. I will not attack the enemy head on. Fellow villagers, please stop tending the fields and stay in the village. Those men who are here are very dangerous. Please rest and wait for my return. Huh? You mean that's not a performance? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the rest of the villagers are none the wiser as they laugh and chat about what happened just now. I'm the only one who is worried. Oh my gosh, these villagers are dumbfounded. Oh my gosh. Yu Huang waves at us. He taps his foot lightly on the water and sails gracefully across the river to the other side. Damn, he's Jesus. <laughs> Inside the hut, I anxiously, anxiously walk in circles until my head starts to hurt and I begin to feel dizzy. The waning moonlight is faint and the flickering candlelight irritates me. I've been listening to the signs of the courtyard since sundown. Mrs. Young left after watching the utensils. There are no masters or servants in the village and she only comes to help me when she is free. That's nice. It is getting late now and yet there is no sign of Yi Huang. Something is not quite right. Oh shoot, that kind of scared me. <laughs> that sound. Could it be Xiao Hang? Oh snap. I quickly take out the key only to find out there is no lock on the door and an ominous red glow can be seen coming through the large crack in it. Looking through the crack, I see the dagger swaying right above Xiao Hang's chest. The tip of the blade seems to be lowering bit by bit. Were they trying to lure Ye Huang just now by the riverbank? Mm, that was their motive, probably. No, there is no time to waste. I cannot let the blade hurt Xiao Hang. Oh, what, what the heck is going on? Oh, so a peal of eerie laughter resounds through the hunt. The gems of the curved animal heads of the dagger look alive, and the like real eyes. They seem to roll as they look right at me. How happy can you be with that wretched life of yours? You might as well just die. It's you again. <laughs> you can't even save yourself. How can you save others? Get lost. Me. <laughs> she just said two words. Get lost. <laughs> because of your betrayal, your nation will crumble. And families will be torn apart. What? What? The red light coming from the room is getting more and more intense. The gems are that are like eyes melt under the red light and drip down from the dagger like blood. The blood-like liquid drips into Xiao Hang's body and turns into flames. What the the beautiful mage, the sacred dagger, the hut, everything is going up in flames. What the fudge? She's on fu- What? <laughs> what? <laughs> hmm? The chilly night winds makes me shiver as I stare at the hut in front of me. Its doors are locked and nothing seems out of place. I slap myself. I seem to be awake. Was that just a dream just now? Worried, I take the keys hanging at my hip and go into the hut to see Xiao Yang. What? The dagger that is pointing at her chest suddenly bursts into flames. Xiao Hang and the dagger starts to shake. Xiao Hang struggles while dangling in midair, then falls forward with a loud thud. Her body is now tangled up in the strings like wooden puppet, and it twisted her in the most unnatural ways. The strings cut into her soft white flesh, making her bleed. She whimpers as she struggles. 
No way. If this continues, Xiao Heng will die. Xiao, Xiao Heng, I'm coming. Don't move. Trying to endure the pain from the sacred seal, I start to pull on the entwining silver strings with my bare hands. Bands. With my bare hands, I mean. I think they meant to say hands. Every one of them cuts deep into my palms like a knife until my hands are in shreds. I need to cut the strings. I watch the tiger hanging in front of me as it starts to quiver and emit a cold light. If you are really a sacred artifact that is meant to protect her, then let me use you to save her. I must save her before I collapse from the pain. Yeah! What's going on? Am I transported into the past? Still no words? Where am I? Oh. All right, guys, that's the end of chapter four. Unfortunately, this is the end of the series for my vow to my leash because the creator only allow people who will film the gameplay to go only up to chapter four because they didn't want to spoil the gameplay for other players. If you're interested in buying this game, it's on Steam and I believe it's still $9.99. And let me tell you, it is worth the buy. I enjoy it. The art is beautiful. The music is beautiful. The voices, everything is just immaculate. Everything is mwah, chef's kiss. I do recommend everyone who's watching to buy this game and play. It is worth the $10. Trust me, it is. And it is a very good story. I like it. I really do. I wish I could go on, but you know, I have to, you know, abide by the creator's rules and I want to respect that. So if you enjoyed the series, please give this video a thumbs up. And um, if you have any other games that you would like me to play, um, any games in particular, it could be horror, it could be in the simulator games, it could be um, story-like games. It doesn't really matter. Just leave it in the comments below and I'll give that game an, a try. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. All right. Bye.